Right. Now in this video lecture, this is in continuation to our previous video lecture we were, where we were discussing regarding the dipole moment of ammonia and nitrogen trifluoride and we said that dipole moment of ammonia is higher than that of nitrogen trifluoride although the electronegativity of fluorine is more than that of hydrogen. Now let's look into the reason based on the dipole moment of individual bonds, right? Because we know that ammonia and uh, nitrogen trifluoride both are pyramidal in shape, right? And they have three NF bonds and NH3 bonds. This is how ammonia will ammonia looks like, right? There is a lone pair which is present in one of the orbitals, right? So this is this has an orbital dipole. It's it's a orbit. It's an orbital dipole moment. This one, right? Since the lone pair is in this direction, right? It's above nitrogen. It would be the dipole dipole moment for this lone pair would be represented this way, right? Now, if we find if you want to represent the dipole moment of these three bonds. It would be from less from electropositive to electronegative element atom, right? It would be like this. This is all. So all these three bonds, right, adds up to this orbital dipole moment here in this case. So it has a dipole moment which is equal to dipole moment of this molecule is equal to 4.90 into 10 to the power of minus 13 coulomb meter, right? Similarly, if you look at the dipole moment of the other molecule right so here we say that the dipole moment of all these NH bonds right adds up to the dipole moment of dipole moment of this lone pair right so here we say that the dipole moment of in its bonds adds to the dipole moment of lone pair right from here it is clear and we know that dipole moment is a vector quantity it has magnitude as well as direction right so based you have to look into the direction of these bonds of this dipole moment here the direction all the direction of dipole moment is in one direction it's pointing here so all these dipole moments add up to the dipole moment of lone pair. So that's what this is how we calculate the dipole moment of ammonia. Right now let's look into the dipole moment of nitrogen trifluoride. It would be N. Right. This is again orbital moment F F. Then you have F. Right. So now nitrogen is more electronegative. This is what we said that although nitrogen is more electronegative but dipole moment of ammonia is greater than the dipole moment of NF3 this is how dipole moment of ammonia is greater than the dipole moment of NF3 right so here it's like this right for lone pair just look at the directions and compare it with this here this is the lone pair right dipole moment of lone pair now dipole moment of these three bonds is in opposite direction right so the dipole moment of these bonds right is partially cancelled by the dipole moment of lone pair since these are in opposite direction okay so that is why dipole moment of nf3 right this molecule which is nf3 right is less than the dipole moment of ammonia right
So here I we can write that dipole moment of NF3 bonds. Right? It says that that the uh, three here we can say that the three NF bonds partially cancels the resultant moment of lone pair. Right? The resultant this lone pair is in this direction. Right? So the dipole moment due to these three NF bonds, right, cancels out the dipole moment due to lone pair. The dipole moment of NF three NF bonds cancels out the dipole moment of lone pair. Right. So the dipole moment will be found to be zero point eight zero into ten to the power of minus thirty coulomb meter. You can see the dipole moment of ammonia is 4.90 into 10 to the power of minus 30, and that of NF3 is 0.80 into 10 to the power of minus 30. So, hence we prove this, right? And the reason is, just look at the direction of the dipole moments. Here, these three are in opposite direction. So, dipole moment of these three NF bonds cancels out the dipole moment due to lone pair, and here the dipole moment of three NF bond and NH bonds. Adds up to the dipole moment of lone pair. Right? This is the reason. Now, let's look into some symmetrical molecules. Right? One example we have taken in the previous section, or uh, in the previous lecture, that of BF3 molecule. Right? BF3. Right? So here F, F, F. So if you want to draw the dipole moment, it would be like this. Fluorine is more electronegative. Right? So dipole moment, dipole moment of this molecule is zero. Right? Because dipole moment of these three BF bonds is would be would be cancelled by the dipole moment of this BF bond, which is pointing in opposite direction. Right? So we say that the dipole moment depends on the arrangement of bonds right how bonds are arranged in space that that calculates the dipole moment of the molecule right so we can just strike one point that dipole moment dipole moment depends on depends on the arrangement of arrangement of bonds right in space it is the, the, the direction the arrangement of bonds will determine the direction of dipole moment right because direction direction is important to see in dipole moment because dipole moment is a vector quantity right that has magnitude and direction now let's look into this ccl4 molecule Right, this is your CCL4 molecule. Right, if you look at the dipole moment of CCL4 molecule, we know that chlorine has high electronegativity, so this will have negative charge, and carbon has positive charge. Right, so it would be like this, pointing towards more electronegativity. So dipole moment of these of dipole moment of this molecule is zero right because the molecule is you can see the molecule of ccl4 is symmetric right so its dipole moment is zero all these bonds right cancels out the effect of one another you can see that one is this the other is in opposite direction one is in this direction right the other is in this direction Right. So all these bonds, equal and opposite bonds, cancels the effect of each other. Dipole moment is zero, and this is a symmetric molecule, right? This is a symmetric molecule. So for symmetric molecules, the dipole moment is zero. Let's look into another. It's this. 
right? This is your methane molecule. For methane molecule, this is your delta positive. Electronegativity of hydrogen is less. So this is how you will point it. Right? For this molecule also, dipole moment is zero. Right? For this molecule also, for methane, the dipole moment is again zero because we can see the di it's it's a symmetric molecule. So for this dipole moment value is used to is used to find the shape of the molecules. Right? If the dipole moment is zero, it's symmetric. It's a symmetric molecule, right? So if you have a different bond, right? If you have a different kind of a bond in a molecule, right? Then that will have a net dipole moment. Here you have all the similar bonds, right? For example, if you have water, right? Water is like this. It's pointing in this direction. Right, so this has this will have a net dipole moment towards this direction. This because this is not a symmetric molecule. It's a the molecule is bent shaped, V shaped, or we call it a bent shaped molecule. We would be studying the shapes of molecules in in hybridization and in VSCPR and valence bond theory that we will be doing in future lectures. Right now. So dipole moment value tells us the symmetric symmetry of the molecule. If it's zero, then it's a symmetric molecule. This is important to see. Right now, let's look into some applications. Applications of dipole moment. So dipole moment. First application is. Dipole moment is used to calculate the polarity of the bonds, right? If you have the value of dipole moment, you can tell how much polar the bond is, right? It is used to find the polarity of bonds, right? How you can see the polarity of bonds? HF, HCl, right? So dipole moment of these molecules, right, decreases in this direction. Dipole moment for ammonia, dipole moment for hydrogen fluoride is maximum, and that of hydrogen iodide is minimum. Dipole moment for HF is 1.78. Right, and that of HI molecule, it's 0.38. It's 0.38. Right. So as you move in this direction, the dipole moment decreases. Right. That means this molecule is the maximum value of dipole moment is that of hydrogen fluoride. So the dipole moment, the this is this is highly polar molecule. So the polarity is maximum. For HF, right? Why maximum? Because of maximum value of dipole moment. So dipole moment will tell you how polar the molecule is. More is the value of dipole moment, more polar the molecule is. Second is, it is used to distinguish between the cis and trans isomers. Right? It is used to find the cis and Trans isomer to distinguish between it is used to distinguish distinguish between cis and trans isomer. Right? Generally, we see that the value of trans iso cis isomer is less. Right, cis isomer usually has higher value. Right, 
cis isomer the value for dipole moment for cis isomer is higher than that of trans isomer right this is used uh, it has an important use right where dipole moment is used to find whether the given molecule is cis isomer or a trans isomer cis and trans isomer you will do in organic chemistry but just understand the say the molecular formula is exactly same but the arrangement of bonds is different for cis and trans isomer right i'll repeat the molecular formula for both these two different isomers would be same the only difference is its arrangement of bonds so cis isomer has higher value of dipole moment than trans isomer right this is used in various uh, medical uh, med medicinal applications right where if you have say there is a there is a medicine called as can cancer medicine known as cisplatin right cisplatin has two forms cis form and trans form and one is a medicine but the other is a poison right so dipole moment will value will tell you which is the which is the medicine form right and it is used to find the the ortho meta and para isomer right it is used to because ortho meta and para has different value for their dipole moment it is used to distinguish between ortho meta and para isomer usually para isomer has a dipole moment value of 0 like right? if this is again you will do about cis uh, about ortho meta and para in organic chemistry this is your ortho this is your meta and this is your para right for para you have dipole moment zero right and dipole dipole moment for ortho is greater than that of para isomer right so for this particular compound for ortho it is 2.54 dep and for this meta isomer it's 1.48 dep right so the basic thing that you need to find here is para isomer this is your para para iso for para isomer dipole moment is zero right you can see that it looks like a symmetric molecule and for ortho isomer the value of dipole moment is maximum right so if you have three forms right whichever has the highest value is ortho whichever has the zero value is para fourth important application is in determining the symmetry of the molecule in determining the symmetry of the molecule we have seen here that whichever molecule has a value of dipole moment equal to 0 that means it's a symmetric molecule right otherwise if the dipole moment has a certain value right that means the molecule is not symmetric right so here we say that like in case of water right we have seen that in case of water it has a net dipole moment right so this is not a symmetric molecule this is a v shaped molecule we have seen in case of ammonia it has a dipole moment in case of nf3 it has a value of dipole moment right so here these molecules are not symmetric we know it, these two are pyramidal in shape this is bent shape molecule right and these are symmetric molecules and these have dipole moment value 0 right so symmetric molecules will have dipole moment value 0 whereas if dipole moment is not 0 it has a certain shape so this is used to determine the shapes of the molecules as well right so i hope this is clear thanks